This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. For our Endangered series, way back in 1996, we made a special wildlife documentary. It followed the fish hawk, the osprey, above, with North Atlantic right whales below, both migrating up the east coast of the USA to Canada. We showed how and why their fortunes were changing, winning or losing. This is not like the new Blue Planet 2, but it provides a very useful basis for an update with brand new footage showing what is being done to help one of the world's rarest whales. Science officials with the US government have warned that the current situation with these whales is dire. And we'll see how this has come about. Can they recover? Answer, that's something we can't let happen. Okay, I'm in. Go, go, go. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Go. A little bit faster. All right, I'm right. We're right behind our flukes. We're grappled in to one of the lines right there. Get ready to deploy. We need to back down on it, okay? Okay. There we go. It's clear on the run it clear on the. Okay. All right. Yeah, let her go. That's about all we can do. Nice job, dude. Nice work, guys. Yeah. And our journey continues. The Osprey in the Sky. The whale in the sea. These are rare right whales mating, something that's very important to one of the smallest whale populations in the world. Once, it was the right whale to hunt because it was slow and floated when killed. It's now better off, but not much. The osprey, too, has had its problems, hidden in the food chain. Now, Ospreys are doing much better, at least in Britain and America. We'll follow the fortunes of these two, the osprey and the right whale, on an exciting journey up the whole east coast of the United States from their points of view. Our story starts in Florida, the southernmost state of America's east coast. Ospreys are quite common here along a shoreline that's changing not only because of man, but also because of nature. The great attraction of living by the sea has its downside. Along the Atlantic shore, hurricanes and the predicted sea level rise due to global warming continue to threaten. Recently, a new beach cost $60 million at Miami Beach.
This is a new beach too, caused by erosion. And it's certainly not Miami Beach. There's no one in sight, except the odd osprey. And it's through his eyes and that of the right whale that we see how much of America's east coast is wild and how much is not, how much is protected and how much is not. Along the shore, the worlds of the osprey and the right whale overlap. One hunts over the shallow sea, the other wallows near the beach. This accessibility made right whales even righter to kill. The northern right whale was once thought to be extinct because of intensive, easy whaling that yielded huge profits. Today, they're firmly protected, at least on paper, and they've become targets not of harpoons, but of cameras. And considering their previous relationship with man, they're surprisingly approachable, although they're a bit cautious about some kinds of research. This is different. To get a bird's eye view, get an airship, ideally one like a whale. Various airships have been used over Florida to study the right whales that come here to have their calves. You might expect large whales to choose empty shorelines like this, but in fact, they're often seen near built up areas and that's become a problem for them. An airship makes an excellent viewing platform for watching whales of all sorts. And for obtaining research footage of right whale behavior from a different angle. Dolphins play around a right whale. But small planes are the workhorses of aerial research, and frequent surveys and photography help the biologists keep track of individual right whales and their calves as well as groups. But today is different, an emergency. Boats and experts are called in. This has been spotted with a whale on the end of it. They're trying to identify the whale by its head markings. Each individual has a different pattern, and they've built up an identikit catalog dating back to 1935. The whale keeps diving. Over its back is a rope, and at the end of the rope is a float from a lobster pot. They try to get closer to the whale. It may have towed the float from much further north, and it may continue to do so because they can't get the rope off. So they'll have to call in a special team to help, if they can keep track of it. Well, that was then. 
and this is now, the start of a desperate and dangerous attempt to rescue an 80-ton, 55-foot terrified whale. The same sort of problem as some 20 years ago. That happened just outside St. Mary's entrance in northern Florida. For right whales, entanglement in fishing gear is a big problem. Another sort comes through channels like these, home of the osprey. Moored like a giant whale, a nuclear submarine. From their base in Cumberland Sound, they head for the ocean on mysterious missions, watched from above, but not from below. Right whales are slow moving, and here, off Fort Clinch, they may or may not get out of the way of an oncoming vessel. The channel through which the submarines pass and where the whale may be at risk was once guarded by this fort which was used in the Civil War. Today, Ospreys patrol a shipping lane used by a very different kind of submarine weaponry. Fort Clinch is now a state park for tourists on the southern side and to the north stretch the great wild beaches of Cumberland Island, protected for people and nature as a national seashore. But further south is another problem, another channel. It leads to the big port of Jacksonville, and at its entrance, there's also a naval presence, Mayport. To help avoid collisions with right whales and their calves, aerial surveys have been increased and the federal budget for research has quadrupled to nearly a million dollars a year. These studies may include anything that sheds light on these very rare creatures, even the lice that normally inhabit the callosities on the head of the living whale. The only good news at all about a dead right whale is that it offers a close-up, detailed view of its anatomy. Here, a student gets a feel for the famous baleen that filters the food from the great gulps of seawater that the so-called baleen whales take. They can grow to 55 feet in length and weigh 50 tons. Their massive bodies become even larger when they've been dead for a while. It was these huge amounts of meat that attracted the whalers in the old days. The blubber is about a foot thick, and the bones are massive, and the oil was valuable. No wonder their population was reduced from some 80,000 to a mere 300 or so today. It turns out that this animal died from both entanglement and being hit by a ship. From behind the beach, the osprey's point of view is very different. 
As we'll see, he's had his problems in the past, but shipping's not one of them. In fact, one of the reasons that the osprey has become a winner is that it can adapt to man, up to a point, that is. Across from the Mayport Navy base, where helicopters keep an eye out for those vulnerable whales, our osprey keeps an eye out for fish to catch. He can either search from the air, which uses up energy but covers a good area, or he can sit quietly and wait for the food to come to him. Each fisherman has his tactics, depending on the tide time. That's often crucial to success. And so is this. Even the tolerant osprey has his limit. Much of the southern Atlantic coast of Florida has been developed, with its beaches built on and its marshes drained and disturbed. But the northern coast has survived quite well so far. As our osprey flies on, the buildings below start to thin out. And soon, he'll be heading up the barrier islands of Georgia, part of the longest chain of barrier islands in the world. It stretches round from Texas to New York, over 2,000 miles, much of which our osprey and our whale will see from their very different viewpoints. The beautiful, empty beaches stretch far out under the sea, but then our passing whale comes to signs of life like this moray eel, itself entering signs of much more life. Today, that includes a curious whale. A whale may associate an old wreck with gatherings of fish. These don't interest her as food because she eats much smaller things by the million and that won't be for a few weeks' time. She might notice these strange shapes, but she'd not know how they got here. Since 1972, they've been dumping things in the sea off Georgia. Tires and ships. Even these. with their engines removed. Big ships were blown up instead of being scrapped. All this was done to help marine life from sponges to whales and dolphins. And now the fishermen benefit. There are more fish out there, 
gathering and breeding on those underwater oases. And here's another possible fishing beneficiary, our osprey. Just compare the rod, hook and line used to catch this fish with the osprey's equipment. Superb eyesight, a hooked beak, curved and pointed talons with pads for holding a slippery, wriggling fish. The difference is that some fishermen deliberately let them go again, so they'll go back to breed around a rusting wreck. And that's all good for business. Sport fishing is now an industry. It all adds up. Tackle. Bait. The fish themselves. Boats. Fuel. Jobs. Fishing, and that means fish, brings in over a quarter of a million dollars every year to the coastal economy. Because of the artificial reefs, many more fish come inshore for food and the shelter. And that's where the valued fisherman, or the osprey, may strike lucky. From Georgia, the right whale and the osprey will move on north, up the coast, past Cape Hatteras. At times of migration, not only the skies above full of birds going their separate ways, but in the ocean there are many pathways too. Sperm whales, largest of the toothed whales and with a tiny lower jaw, may confront a right whale near the surface. then dive to great depths to hunt for giant squid in the black, cold abyss. The others, at the surface, talk to each other with clicks. They rub and play before surging away on their mysterious voyage. And down below, a wandering turtle sets off for some distant shore. Dolphins plow on, guided by senses we can't understand, heading for places we may not know. these two are going, though we may not understand how they find their way. The ospreys arrived at Chincoteague, nearly a thousand miles from where it was in Florida a few weeks ago. The area is in trouble because a beetle has been damaging the coastal forest and possibly further endangering this endangered squirrel. The damaged trees must be cut down and the squirrel may suffer. Although all the species here are protected by this national wildlife refuge, there are always management problems. These, for example. The famous ponies of Chincoteague are aliens, introduced long ago and now part of what is inevitably an altered landscape. They graze the salt marsh 
which may affect the native birds that feed there, like waders, ibis, and egrets. Then there are the deer, some also introduced, but a balance seems to have been struck, and Chincoteague is one of the most beautiful landscapes on the East Coast. The sun sets on the whale resting offshore. Soon, she'll move on. It's the second time in a decade that 13-year-old ruffian named for the scars that make him seem roughed up, had become entangled in fishing gear. He suffered deep wounds in 2008, caused by ropes from which he eventually freed himself. But what about this time? Very close, but I wasn't going to take that. Yeah, yeah, the angle was kind of... 